Welcome back, everyone. And my co-host is Julie. How are you, Julie? Fine. Sea Wing, how are you today? Very good. Very exciting. Very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> so today we could talk about is the, the new asset class, is the midterm rental. Are they really what they're supposed to be? Mm-hmm. Are, they, are they really are very lucrative or are they a sh- short of a, a come and go or are they a fad? So, okay, fly by night. <laughs> and yeah, that's right. Or they fly by night. Midterm rentals. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, without further ado, the midterm rental really that exciting and that lucrative as all the hype out there that are claiming to be. This is just my opinion. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my opinion comes from my years of the, doing this as a risk investor. I've done it for 20 years. I own a portfolio of homes for many years. I'm a music guru, if you will, legitimate kind, not the fake one. <laughs> you know how often I talk about the fake guru, right. overpromise and underdeliver. There you go. There's a lot of that out there for sure. Over the years, I have done a lot of uh, hundreds of investors, especially newbie investors, mostly from California, right? Interesting. Yeah, to buy out of state, touring right. machine. Right. Right. Not basing. Invest for the long term, then at the end of the day, they are achieving a great financial freedom for their life. Mm-hmm. And- for themselves and for their families. But mm-hmm. anyway, without further ado, let me show you my mind. This is just my own opinion. Uh, take it for whatever what it is. And look, all the medium term rental gurus out there, including this gentleman, and there are quite a few more mid term rental gurus out sure. there. They pull provide a lot of good content. A lot of them are pretty legitimate, right? They are not mm-hmm. over the top. Some are. But I've done a lot of research lately about the uh, pros and cons of getting getting into the midterm rental uh, space. And let's uh, let's go through it. And again, one of the videos that uh, Mister this guy uh, I'm not gonna mention his name. But he he put, he's one of the gurus, and a lot of his video, mm-hmm. just like a lot of people out there, they have some very exciting sounding headlines. Okay, just to uh, get you in there. So Julie, here she's the pros and cons. It's over here. By the way, when mm-hmm. this right here, if I put over here, you, you can't see it, right? You can't see the words, right? Oh, I can see everything. Yeah, it says pros and cons, and then you get the pros, oh. makes 50%, and then the cons, it's an active business. Yeah, I can okay. see everything. Oh. oh, very good. Okay. All right, the pros. The pros of uh, owning a midterm rental. Midterm rental means more than 30-day renting, less than a year, all right? So it's, it's more long-term than short-term rentals, but it's more <laughs> short-term, short-term rental than long-term traditional long-term rentals, right? The pros are potentially uh, a medium-term rental asset class. You will make about 50% more monthly cash flow than a traditional long-term. Right. Rental. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. It all depends on what market. Correct. Very good point. Very good point. I can only think of one pros. <laughs> to the whole mm-hmm. bunch of cons. Hey, I'm good. And here are the mm. following cons of owning a uh, midterm rental asset uh, property. The cons are, it is an active business, okay? Mm-hmm. You, are, you are a business owner. You are an entrepreneur. And most people are not equipped to become an entrepreneur. Most people, Julie, if you agree with me. I do agree with that, yes. The W-2 employee, they work for right. That's mm-hmm. all they know. That's all right. they know. That is all their comfort level. I'm not saying that's bad. That's a very good traditional consumer. Correct. Correct. Nine to five mm-hmm. job, W2, they work for others. They are not self-employed business owners. They are not entrepreneurs. If you out there or a traditional nine to fiver, if you want to get into real estate investing, if you want, if you can get into rental, it is not your skill set, right? Rental owner may not be your skill set. That's and correct. You know how hard it is to transition? From a W-2 employee that most of you are out there, right? business owner, to become an entrepreneur. Guess what? By owning a medium-term rental, you could have to become that. You have to wear a different hat. Correct. Right? Correct. A lot of people, nope. their quote-unquote buy box is wrong. Their, mm. their skill set, their mindset is one thing, but you buy an investment property that are not conducive to your mindset, to what you do well. That's why right, right. I, I potentially see a lot of failures out there as we speak. Mm-hmm. People try to enter the medium-term rental space and they mm-hmm. fail. 
because you're going these cars. What do you think? I think that is something that you have to look at. How much hands on do you want to be with this business? Like we've talked earlier with the turnkey approach, it's once you get the property, it's very hands off because you have a property manager handling all that. This is a whole nother animal. And like you said, if you do have that nine to five mindset where I'm off at five and I don't do anything, uh, it's going to be very hard to be successful at something like this. I agree, Julie. Now, with that said, there are quite a few people all over the country. Oh, are absolutely. Or becoming successful in medium term rent and not totally fishing to rental space as a whole. What I'm saying is a lot more people are entering in this asset class not knowing what's in right. for, for them. Am I right? That's correct. That's a very good point. Again, you got to read, read between the lines because it sounds like it's a great opportunity. When most people see 50% more cash flow, it's like, yeah, who wouldn't want to do that? But then with that 50% more cash flow, there's probably about 75% more work that you have to do. <laughs> so you have to wait. Is it, like you said, people can be successful. People are very successful in this arena. You just got to decide how much time and effort you want to put into it. Yeah, yeah. You have to know. And money. <laughs> exactly. And lots of money. Above beyond paying the down payment uh, for your mm -hmm. new property. Absolutely. But anyway, the second, the second uh, bullet point I have, the cons, the second cons are, you are essentially becoming a professional salesperson. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Because in order to market your property for mid to rental tenants, oftentimes they don't tell you this until the, you have to go door knocking. What do I mean by door knocking? Mm -hmm. You have to make a lot of cold calls. You have to cold call on a daily, weekly basis, whatever, mm -hmm. to local hospitals. You have to cold call insurance companies, insurance agencies. You have to call mm -hmm. corporate relocation companies who could right. supply you with a stream of a midterm tenants to uh, right. rent from you, right? Good point. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. I have been in businesses where you've had to cold call. I think that was probably the part I enjoyed the least. I, I totally agree. <laughs> people, yeah. you know, being a salesman itself is very challenging. A lot, it of people, is. a lot of people don't have the mindset, but cold calling, that is just brain damage. Yeah. That just, Hats off to people that can do that. Yeah, people who are good in cold calling. Or, yes was a good professional salesperson, potentially they could make a lot of money, right? Right. Anyway, and furthermore, the cons are, it's a potential for high vacancies because high maintenance, right? You, you have mm -hmm. on a, if you rent a, a property midterm, like once every two or three months, potentially mm -hmm. you have four or five, six different type of renters in there on an annual basis, right? That's true. You Very true. Wear and tear of all the furniture, the property could be messed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. And if you, don't, if you don't know how to market your property for midterm rent, rental pool, you can have a high vacancy, right? You can, Correct. If, if a one tenant leaves after three months, then you might have to wait. You probably could be vacant for a month or two months before you Correct. Can. Yeah, that's very true. Especially when you don't know how to market. Especially when you don't know how to cold call. You don't want to do cold calling. Especially you don't want to do the work. Mm -hmm. Spend the mm -hmm. time. Correct. And, and of course... Another under, under situation, under talk about is the cost of furniture. You have to fully furnish your property above and beyond the, the down payment you buy for a new house. Mm -hmm. this, for this pur purpose, the closing costs and mm -hmm. uh, rehab costs. The cost of furniture on a 1,500 square foot mental rental uh, property could be like fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 extra of pocket. That's true. And I don't think people look at that, not just the cost of furnishing it, but then the maintenance. There's people, no one takes care of your property better than you do, right? <laughs> yeah. you may, that may be coming a recurring cost of having to replace this and that and the other. So again, not that it's not a viable strategy, but you have to look at the short end as well as the long term and what it's going to cost before you actually begin to see your profit. Exactly. And this is a very concerning you have a limited rental pool, okay? Mm. Look, long-term rental, the traditional long-term rental that you and I do for many years, this is a vast ocean of renters that can rent a long-term rental, mm -hmm. property, right? Absolutely. Okay. So us, it's so easy, so easy to have a long-term rental because the, the rental pool is so huge. 
Correct. But the medium to rental, look, medium to rental asset class is a beginning, it's a beginning type of uh, strategy. It's a very new asset class. I'm not saying right. like, maybe five to 10 years, maybe a better marketing schemes are available where you don't have to do professional cold calling. You don't have, you may be able to become a remote midterm a rental property owner where you can spend uh, as less time as a long-term rental. That's down the road when the system process and procedure improves on the middle rental space, right? Till that happens, as of right now in 2024, that's the challenging, that's the challenge you're facing. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, because you have a limited rental pool and more competition, people jumping into the middle rental game, fierce competition, it'll, it'll affect your already limited right. rental pool of tenants. Mm, good point. Very good point. Mm -hmm. and, and not finally, but two more bullet points. People think about rental as a whole. Oh, traveling yeah. nurses. Oh, there's a whole abundance of traveling nurses. They are everywhere. They are the best. You know, look at their furnished finder, the main website. They use this buzzword, traveling nurses. They are everywhere. They rent your space for two or three, four months at a time. They pay you very high rent, this and that. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for this overhype. Traveling nurses, the healthcare industry, especially during the COVID, it was robust, mm -hmm. right? Because all the hospitals all over the country during the pandemic, they are short of staff. They're short of medical staff, short of nurses, hospitals, or whatever. And they, they, so they have to they have to find nurses from out of town. So mm -hmm. therefore, it was, it was during COVID, it was traveling nurses are very robust rental pool for correct. Nurses. But now, mm, not that's so much. So interesting. From what I, I think, from what from my research recently, is that the, there are less and less traveling nurses out there. Interesting. And not only that, the healthcare industry, as it relates to mid mid to rental space. Is also decreasing. You cannot, mm -hmm. you cannot rely on the healthcare industry and the traveling nurses to provide for your tenant pool for many mm -hmm. rental owners, landlord these days. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it's one of those things where you not only have to understand the market in which you're getting into, but you have to be able to follow the trends of the people that you're marketing to. So that you understand who to market to and who to not market to. Because, yeah, that could kill the fact that they're not traveling so much could kill your whole strategy. Absolutely. Not. And finally, and this is the worst of all, you can't say, look, when you buy long-term rental, for the most part, it, mm -hmm. it, it works in almost every city, every state. Tremendously large pool of potential long-term tenants for our income properties. For midterm rentals, you have to find, there's only a few locations in the country that are conducive for midterm rental opportunities. Mm -hmm. Not only there need to be a close to major hospitals and colleges, which is not that easy, right? Correct. To, to find a property in those areas, but you have to find the property itself. What kind of properties? Condos, a multi-unit or single family home? What condition? Right. Price point. If you buy in California, it will cost you $1 million to buy a middle rental and then, but you know, or you can be able to get the traveling nurses to pay the rent, to pay your right. mortgages for you. That's you a good have, point. Yeah, you have to know where to buy, what kind of properties to buy. There's very little data points that allow you to do some proper research. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's just very little past history to go on mm -hmm. to find the right market, to right. Find, find the right mm -hmm. location. Absolutely. Yeah, just keep it simple. You have to decide what is your tolerance for risk? How much do you want to be involved in? And like you talked about, it's true entrepreneurship to get into something midterm or short term because you're just, you have to be very hands on and you just have to know what you're getting into before you die. But look, what if it, your parents used to tell you, look before you leap? Yeah, you gotta look before you leap. <laughs> now, if people want to get into midterm rental, I'm not saying you, you, you should do that. But if I were you, you should do listen. I buy a property uh, mainly for long-term rental, mainly for that purpose. Primary mm -hmm. goal is to buy long-term rental because that track record, the past history of doing well. Right. Right? Right. If that long-term rental are located in an area that mm -hmm. might be conducive for, for mid-term rental as well, right. or even short-term rental, you have a trifecta. 
That makes sense. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of our markets, Julie, some of our long-term markets are very conducive to mid-term rental or even short-term rental. Right. Yes. Several of our Florida long-term rental capital markets we promote are uh -huh. to mid-term rental as well. And even Correct. like some of like in, in, in our central Texas, not South Texas, our central Texas market we have, which is Austin, the San Antonio corridor, some of our long-term rentals, uh, some of our uh, new construction duplex and fourplexes in those central Texas area, they are primary traditional long-term rentals, but they can be easily converted. So certain markets, it works well. So do your do your due diligence and research to see whether you you have the right buy box. You have the you have the skill set. You have to know right. what you're good at. Each one of us we have strengths and weaknesses. I absolutely. Have, I have a lot of weaknesses. And my weaknesses are I have not talked about this before. Do you know I do not even have the ability to change the doorknob on my house? Oh, interesting. Oh, I'm good to know. I am not handy whatsoever. I <laughs> hate that. He says, see, when you cannot even fix a doorknob in your own house. You know, you know my bathroom? My bathroom, yes. one of my bathroom doors, I can't lock it. It's oh, my goodness. And I don't know how to fix that door. So what I'm trying to say is it stopping me from buying rental properties? No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know what your strengths are. You know what your weaknesses are. <laughs> Delegate on the thing. Exactly. Not like doing. I have no interest to learn. Correct. I, I, I do not want to learn how to fix a house, how to rehab a house. I don't right. want to do that. When I buy income property, I look at the return. I look at the whole big picture. Is it right? It's going to make me money. It's going to cash flow. Have to, does it meet my cap rate? Does it meet my rent to value ratio? White market. Do I have a team I can delegate, which I do, right? Yes, First, absolutely. My goal is to enjoy now. Yes. Let my team handle all the labor intensity. I agree with that. I could use the money, use the passive income, use the equity of my all my homes. So I can travel the world, which I've done for many years. Exactly. You have any final thoughts? I think it's good to know your strengths and your weaknesses, uh, for sure. And wherever you're weak, you delegate or you hire somebody to do that for you, which I think is very important. I think, again, just like with all these strategies, just read the fine print and do your homework. And don't just, like I said, read the headline and think, oh, this is a great idea. Midterm rentals, 50% more in, in income and yeah, but there's a price that comes with that 50% too. So make sure you know the price and you count the cost before you get into something like that. I agree. I agree. Very well said. Okay, with that in mind, as we conclude, if you receive any value whatsoever from this presentation, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also subscribe to my email below on my website so you can become an insider. You can be a free member of our investment network. Every morning you receive email of free educational, realistic investor, content, free education, free investment opportunities so you can take action to become wealthy yourself. Thank you so much. See you next time in the next video.